The Olden World, a dreamlike interlude, written by Person of Stone. Starlight was freaking out, so was everyone else. There were fish everywhere, in her mane, in the mud, some miraculously still in wagon while others were still landing around her. Needless to say, things were not looking good. All the effort, the macaroni deal, Grand Gerald's entire life savings, practically wasted. Starlight was moving before she realized it, picking a fish up with her mouth and free more with her magic. Grand Gerald was still freaking out. The wagon looked to be in good shape despite the sudden stop, but it wasn't quite as tall as she remembered. She'd worry about that later. Right now, she needed to get her fish. She dropped the free fish into the wagon and spat out the fourth. GG, stop freaking out and pick up a fish! We have to hurry, Starlight shouted, levitating four more fish into the wagon as the townsfolk picked fish out of their manes and mouths. Starlight looked around. It wasn't as bad as she first thought, only half the fish strewn around the wagon. She could probably pick them all up within a minute with Grand Gerald's help, but that minute could make all the difference. In fact, she could hear cheering coming from the street beside her. Grand Gerald really is a good wagon driver, she realized, considering how long it took for the cheering to even start again. She doubled her efforts as Grand Gerald dumped ten fish into the wagon at once. There were only a few fish left when Stolly saw another wagon turn the corner at breakneck speed. Ah, the Emperors. Of course they would be in second place. Ha, nerds! Elver laughed as their wagon raced past full of fish surrounded by a yellow aura. They needed to leave now. Starlight hopped into the side of the wagon. GG, let's go! Starlight? The wagon's bogged, Grand Gerald shouted back. What? Starlight hopped back out of the wagon and looked. Yep, they were bogged all right. She could see both wheels on her side were half a foot buried in mud. Eh, that explained why it seemed shorter than usual. She immediately lit her horn and started pulling the wagon, Grand Gerald pushing at the back. The wagon moved forward a little. Her horn made a loud pop, but not quite enough, and her horn extinguished. The wagon moved back, and Grand Gerald started freaking out again. We're never going to get the fish there in time! My life savings! Grand Gerald wailed, his wings covering his face. Think, Starlight. There has to be something you can do. Starlight closed her eyes and took a breath. Starlight opened her eyes. Gigi, stop sobbing and get ready to push when I say. She lit her horn as Grand Gerald wiped his nose, nodding. We have to rock it back and forth. Push! Starlight moved the wagon forward with her aura, Grand Gerald pushing at the back. Now pull! The wagon rolled back, but a little more back than if they simply stopped. Push! Starlight pushed the wagon forward with her aura again, getting more distance than the first time. Pull! Once more, the wagon rocked backwards, seemingly freed, but not just yet. Push! Starlight yelled again. We're moving, Grand Gerald said from the back, the wagon free at last. Starlight hopped in the front, a grin on her face. Grand Gerald flapped into the seat beside her, grabbing the reins and signaling their flying fish to start flapping. As the wagon started to pick up speed, the sun reflected of bubbles of scale straight into Starlight's eyes, blinding her, and she shut them. Starlight opened her eyes and saw fur. She could feel the ship's harmonic vibrations, a soft resonance that carried down from the energy comet and reached her all the way through her cabin's plush bed. Come back to sleep, she mumbled, shifting to bury her face beneath a foreleg. On her other side, Amber snored loudly in agreement. Maybe, but I'm not that tired. Maple didn't move. You are? Mm. At that, Maple rolled over. Did you dream? She whispered. Starlight had. End of a silly interlude.